Unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably heard about ChatGPT. ChatGPT is our new AI overlord, according to many. Many popular authors, including Jordan Peterson, Alex Hormozzi, have stated that ChatGPT is basically uh, a new era, and according to many, the beginning of the end. If ChatGPT is indeed as smart as they say, and it is our new AI overlord, well, one implication would be that all personal trainers might be out of a job soon, because, well, if ChatGPT can make effective training programs and be a nutrition coach, then what's there left for us? I am a personal trainer and I'm an exercise scientist, and in this video I'm going to check if ChatGPT can indeed replace humans when it comes to creating effective training programs. So what I did is I asked ChatGPT, design a training program for maximum muscle hypertrophy for an intermediate male lifter. So here's what it said. Here is a 12 week training program designed to promote maximum muscle hypertrophy for an intermediate male lifter. The program includes a combination of heavy weight lifting and hypertrophy focused exercises. Okay. With a focus on progressive overload to stimulate muscle growth. Good. Note, this program assumes that the lifter has a good understanding of basic lifting technique and has been consistently training for at least six months. Okay, thank you for the disclaimer. Six months, I would uh, think, is uh, the bare minimum if I tell you if it's for an intermediate male lifter. But let's not nitpick. Here, now it gets super interesting. Weeks one to four, strength phase. So the first inclination of ChatGPT when I say a program for maximum muscle hypertrophy, muscle growth, is a strength phase. There is actually research on this. A few years ago, I reviewed an article on my blog where they showed that a strength phase before an hypertrophy block promotes greater muscle hypertrophy, not just in the hypertrophy block, but even in the period overall. However, this study is a bit of an outlier. It's from Brazil. So, you know, depending on how much stock you put in that particular study versus the literature as a whole, uh, it doesn't carry that much weight. Moreover, subsequent research has found that the order doesn't matter and that it is better not to use block periodization, but to use it within sessions. So you can see a couple of recent studies on this on my Instagram, for example, where I show that block periodization doesn't have a great track record in uh, exercise science. Uh, it honestly never had, but now really the research is virtually entirely negative or at best neutral with almost no positive findings for block periodization. So this model is definitely not in line with the current research, even if we assume that ChatGPT is aware of that. Um, relatively recent study from Brazil. However, uh, let's look at it in uh, a little bit of detail and then we'll give it another try. So weeks one to four strength phase, day one squat, four sets of four reps and bench press, bend over rows, weighted pull-ups, all for four sets of four. And then day two, four sets of four for everything again and then day three rest. Interestingly, it doesn't say how often you're training. I am going to assume that this is a rotating split so that you're doing one day on uh, day one, day two, you do day two, and then you do a rest day and then you're just gonna rotate through that. So you're basically gonna train two out of every three days, but it doesn't specify this. Uh, rest period is two to three minutes between sets, which is very low for a strength block. That's generally considered inadequate. It's more like three minutes minimum because it takes about three minutes before the ATP creatine phosphate system recovers. So if you're only resting about two minutes in between sets, then energy production in the muscle is going to be a limiting factor for force production rather than maximum muscle activity and force production. So it's not optimal to stimulate maximum performance. Basically, if the body cannot deliver maximum performance inside the neuromuscular system, then that's also not the adaptation it can um, get better at. It cannot adapt to a performance that it's not doing, to put it simply. Okay, you want to warm up before each workout, progressive overload. Okay, that's good. Incorporate cardiovascular exercise two to three times per week for overall health and fitness. Follow a proper nutrition plan. These disclaimers are something uh, a little bit new. I remember from when ChatGPT first launched, at the very start, uh, it didn't have all these things and it wasn't as politically correct. In many people's opinion, ChatGPT has actually become a lot worse in making it more politically correct. And I would definitely agree with that, especially here. It's, I think it's not aware that cardiovascular exercise, especially three times per week in a program where you're training two out of three days. So that, that's a lot of cardiovascular exercise. And especially if it's literally already recommending a strength block before a hypertrophy block. So literally you're doing a strength block with cardio three times per week for someone whose goal is maximum muscle hypertrophy. That really doesn't make a lot of sense anymore. Uh, cardio three times per week in many studies uh, induces an interference effect, which reduces muscle growth. 
It's called the concurrent training effect or the interference effect. There's a lot of research on this dating back to the 80s, although the magnitude of this is discussed is, uh, or questioned by some people. In trained lifters, I would say that cardio three times per week is definitely not something I would recommend if your goal is primarily maximum muscle hypertrophy. Like if your goal is primarily health and general fitness, then sure, you can do it, but that's not what I asked. All right, the volume on this is weird. Everything is four sets of four, which, well, this actually works okay because it's all compound work, but four sets of four on the bent over rows, not, not a fan. I mean, most people's technique breaks down horribly when you go that heavy. And then squat, we have basically, that's the only exercise that's effective for the quad. Deadlifts really aren't that great because of the partial range of motion and the greater demand on hip extension as opposed to knee extension. So yeah, it's like four sets of quad work per three days. I mean, it's not, not the worst. And then for like the lateral delts, you have overhead press is the only one. But interestingly, it does an incline dumbbell press on the second day instead of a flat bench press. Overall, the volume is not too bad, but some muscle groups like the short head of the hamstrings is literally untrained because the only hamstring exercise in this entire four week strength block is the deadlift. And that doesn't train the short head of the biceps femoris because that's purely a knee extensor. You need something like lat curls in a program. In general, there's a complete lack of accessory exercises and any isolation work. So this, this program is not balanced. And I, I would say it's definitely not in line with maximum muscle hypertrophy. So let's look at the hypertrophy phase, which hopefully is more in line with what I asked it, maximum muscle hypertrophy. And the goal of the hypertrophy phase is to focus on higher reps and volume to stimulate muscle growth. Okay, great. Day one, day two, and day three. Okay, so again, it's gonna do the rotating split thing, uh, I assume at least, that that's its intent. That's why I gave it another try to clarify, and I specified four days per week in that. But before we get to that, let's look at this. Squat, bench press, bent over rows, pull-ups, dumbbell flies, skull crushers, hammer curls. Okay, so first thing I see there is the kind of typical bro method of squats for legs and then one, two, three, four, five, six exercises for the upper body. <laughs> so lower body is one exercise and then we do six exercises for the upper body. So chat GPT is definitely a bro. Uh, this is particularly odd because this is kind of a two out of three day full body workout, which is very inventive. I like that. I like that chat GPT doesn't constrain itself to these typical you know, upper, lower, push, pull legs kind of uh, simplified models. Um, it's super, super heavily upper body dominant. Squats don't train the hamstrings in contrast to popular belief. So I have an article on squat myths on my website where you can uh, read up on this if you want. And then deadlifts, I mean, both squats and deadlifts aren't great for the calves. And again, we have the issue that there is no hamstring work uh, in terms of leg curls. So nothing that does a knee flexion, which completely neglects the short head of the biceps femoris of the hamstrings. So yeah, this is a terrible, terrible program for the lower body and it's super heavy upper body dominant, which, um, yeah, okay, also not great. So I give it another try and I said, okay, let's do four days per week. Uh, let's stop the rotating split thing. And I'm gonna specify uh, four days per week. So I told it, yeah, there's also an advanced hypertrophy phase because it's just the same, they add a set. Uh, design a training program for maximum muscle hypertrophy for an intermediate male lifter that trains four days per week. So basically the same command, but with the specification that it needs to be four days per week. And then again, it comes up with the 12 week training thing, like starting with a strength phase. So JetGPT seems to be really married, uh, at least in, this, in these prompts, to, that, um, to the concept of uh, a strength block before an hypertrophy block to supposedly promote additional hypertrophy. And yeah, it's actually a very similar program I see. So it's, this is all the same. And then again, it does the, the rotating work thing, but yeah, it doesn't understand four days per week, clearly, because you see here, weeks one to four, strength phase, this is all kind of the same, but they have day one, day two, day three, and day four. So basically just inserted a day four after the rest day. So now you have a really weird rotating split. You have two days on a rest day and then a fourth day, but then well, supposedly you uh, start again at day one. So it would actually be three days on, one day off, but it's formulated in an odd manner. Yeah, it added a fourth day which is a very weird day because it's doing Romanian deadlifts, four sets of four, and then barbell curls, four sets of four, skull crushers, four sets of four, and seated dumbbell shoulder press, four sets of four. None of those exercises I like for four sets of four. Yeah, this is probably even the, the worst of the additional days. And this is a nice general point about chat GPT, I think. Many people are super worried about chat GPT being, you know, our AI overlord, it's gonna overtake everything. Uh, honestly, if you've 
looked at some of the threads of the, the goofs of ChatGPT. There are some really funny ones. Um, it, it's really not very smart. In fact, ChatGPT is just a text processor. It cannot think. And that's what you can see here. It's like when you ask Google, the, I'm feeling lucky, you know, it can, you can have Google generate a one single answer. Also, if you ask your Android phone or the latest Siri, what the answer to a question is, then often it does the I'm feeling lucky from Google, which has been there for like 10 years, I think. And it just parses what it thinks is the best result in a Google, in a, in a search, and it gives you that. And there's no thinking involved. It's just processing text. So by definition, ChatGPT cannot create anything novel. It can just reprocess things in a way to, well, you can make something novel in a way by reprocessing it, but it doesn't really make something novel in terms of having its own creative thoughts. And also its logic is very lacking. So really, I think ChatGPT is currently one of the most overrated things on the internet in terms of like, uh, the end is nigh, ChatGPT is going to take over everything. No, ChatGPT is just essentially another version of Google right now. It's like ChatGPT is for people that don't know how to use Wikipedia and Google, and ChatGPT gives them a ready-made answer. I know that there are some things that ChatGPT can do um, relatively okay, like write essays. On that note, uh, my team has looked at what we can do with ChatGPT in terms of marketing, sales. The best things honestly AI does right now is to help with video editing, but my video editor for these videos has been using these programs for a long time, like transcribing, the subtitles, those kind of things. Within very concretely defined fields, AI does well, and that's the problem. Most things that we like to think of as intelligent and humans are not well defined. So things like chess, yes. Uh, AI absolutely destroys any human being. I play chess and I think chess bots now have AIs of with an ELO 3500 and then the world champion is like 3000 or something. And basically above 2500, it gets pretty superhuman for the average individual. And above 2000, you're looking at completely unbeatable individuals already by anyone that doesn't make chess his or her job or like a very, very serious hobby. And I think the average in the world is 1200 or something. So yeah, ch chat bots right now are absolutely, ju they just calculate all the possible options essentially. So they absolutely destroy any human and they look into the future like 30 plus moves deep, which is just impossible for a human to do with multiple computations and options. So yeah, in that things it does well, but when you create it more open-ended and you have to things like uh, driving cars, which I think the problem is the left turn right now, it, they cannot do that very well. So even things that are relatively well defined, it seems like take a left turn with a car, even when there are pedestrians and the like, uh, are still very, very difficult. And if you look here, ChatGPT doesn't even know how to, uh, what it means to train four days a week. So I gave it one more try, for a try, and this was actually by far the best try. So this program, let's look at in a bit more detail, to help you understand how uh, I look at training programs and how you can make better training programs yourself. Okay, last run. Here we go. Boom, there we have it. The last attempt of ChatGPT, third attempt to make an effective Training split for someone that trains four days per week and wants maximum muscle hypertrophy and is an intermediate lifter, or intermediate male lifter even I specified, because there are some sex differences and I want to see how much it could differentiate between those and if uh, it actually made a difference. But it doesn't seem to have any implications so far for what it has done. Let's look at this. Overall, this looks a lot better. It talks about exercise selection, progressive overload, variations, uh, interesting. Some, I see some interesting things already. Set and rep scheme, variation, and okay, remember to always warm up, use proper form, listen to your body. Okay, all good. Nice disclaimers. Thank you for that. And this uh, gives a sample training program instead of the actual training program, even though what I asked it is to design the training program. But okay, uh, I like that. Principles over concrete, um, you know, cookie cutter programs. Okay, so let's look at what it says. Exercise selection, choose exercises that are compound movements that target multiple muscle groups. I don't see why you would do that for muscle hypertrophy. If anything, the consensus is that isolation exercises are almost necessary, but most research finds, the latest meta-analysis finds that compound and isolation exercises don't stimulate different rates of muscle hypertrophy per se. It just depends on the exercise in question. So whether it's a compound or an isolation exercise itself doesn't matter for muscle hypertrophy, but some exercises are better for a muscle group than others. So 
to, for example, the bench press is great for the pecs and flies are also great for the pecs and they may be on average about equal. But the bench press is probably not optimal for the triceps because it doesn't train the long head of the triceps research finds. So then something like an overhead tricep extension is most likely more effective or almost certainly based on the research we have. So yeah, I don't agree with that. Set and rep scheme, aim for three to five sets of eight to 12 reps. Okay, that's like the classic, um, you know, three sets of eight to 12. That's been like the bodybuilding go-to before uh, we knew that the hypertrophy zone was a myth and now people are a lot more flexible. To maximize muscle hypertrophy, so yeah, it, there's really no need for that, but it's fine that it chooses that. Use a weight that is challenging, but allows you to complete all reps with good form. Rest 60 to 90 seconds between sets. Ah, so 60 to 90 seconds is now generally considered suboptimal. In 2014, I wrote a big review paper on the best rest intervals to maximize muscle growth together with Brad Schoenfeld. And the conclusion was uh, strongly that the current recommendation at the time, which was the 60 to 90 second rest, was based on zero solid evidence. There wasn't a single study to support that that was better for hypertrophy and there was direct evidence contradicting it, but people were just so caught up in just rationalizing the pump and the burn that they get and following what bodybuilders do that they just didn't listen to the research. Even scientists uh, did not listen to, for example, the Buresh study, which showed that resting, I think it was five minutes, was better for muscle hypertrophy than two minutes. And then subsequently I co-authored uh, another paper where we showed that rest intervals of three minutes are better than one minute and now the consensus is pretty much that you need more rest than that because if you don't then you're not uh, your performance just goes down too much you cannot stimulate maximum muscle tension uh, like i told you before for strength the same applies kind of for muscle hypertrophy three minutes or so is generally considered ideal three minutes minimum because you need to replenish the ATP and the creatine phosphate stores so that energy production is not a limiting factor and you can actually have muscle tension as the limiting factor. All right, moving on, training frequency, train each muscle group twice per week. That's okay for an intermediate male lifter. I would say it's like two times a week minimum, but the consensus currently is probably still like twice a week. And I'm of course the high frequency guy. Okay, that's fine. Let's uh, do twice a week for intermediate male lifter. Uh, 48 hours of rest between sessions. This means you will be training four days per week. Well, that's what I asked you. Progressive overload, okay, great. Variation, incorporate different exercises, set and rep scheme and training techniques to keep your muscles guessing and avoid hitting a plateau. Ah, that's the classic muscle confusion, confusion. There is no such thing as confusing muscle tissue, okay? Muscle tissue is contractile tissue. Just like it doesn't care whether you're using an isolation exercise or a compound exercise, the muscle doesn't get confused. It just registers tension. And it, it really doesn't uh, respond any differently inherently whether you whether it expected a bench press and you were doing a dumbbell bench press and the tissue is like, oh my God, what's happening? Let's grow. No, there's nothing like that happening. In fact, a lot of research now has showed, studies by Damas et al, for example, that if you incorporate excess variety in your program, it increases muscle damage and protein breakdown levels, but it doesn't enhance muscle protein synthesis and it also doesn't enhance muscle growth, and it certainly doesn't enhance strength development. To get better at a certain movement pattern, you need to incorporate that movement pattern consistently in your program. So yeah, this is just a complete myth. And then it gives the sample training program. So let's look at that. Upper body, lower body, rest, upper body, lower body, and then two rest days. Okay, so actually four days per week, great. And upper lower, it's a typical upper lower split. Overall, I would say that with the rest interval, the muscle confusion myth, the old idea of like short rest for muscle growth, and then the eight to 12 reps. This is like 2010 program design exactly. So that's, that's interesting um, because many people have this idea that AI is like on, on top of and super up to date and on top of everything. And it's like the most novel thing, right? But like I said, chat GPT is just a text processor. It just gathers information from the internet and it looks at kind of everything together and it doesn't have a very great sense of which information is better than other information. So it kind of goes with what's more frequent. If the consensus, or it takes a long time to shift the paradigm or the consensus in any field. And in terms of exercise science here, we can see that like things like the hypertrophy zone, those myths, they die slowly. The myths, they crumble very slowly because people at the top, they recognize them first and then it's kind of trickles down until, you know, PTs that just educate themselves based on what um, people closer to the science say and it trickles down to the PTs and then when the PTs uh, start telling their clients and stuff then we see that like gen pop also kind of gets an idea of that and people can say oh I heard this and other people are like I heard that's a myth 
Right, so it, it takes a while before knowledge trickles down from scientific research to the like, general population. And as a result, the, the total volume of um, stuff that's put on the internet, of text that goes on the internet, it takes a long time before that shifts and everyone, all the programs that the ChatGPT finds on the internet, they change and they are no longer um, all 8 to 12 reps. But now, if ChatGPT searches the internet, it probably finds still a lot of 8 to 12 reps uh, as the hypertrophy zone. Um, even though it's fine to do use 8 to 12 reps, but the reason it chooses, it chooses that specifically is probably because it's been so popular for so long. Okay, so upper body, uh, lower body, let's look at the specific days. Upper body, bench press, bent over rows, seated dumbbell press, pull-ups. So it, it does kind of the classic horizontal push, horizontal pull, uh, vertical press, vertical pull, and then arm and arm work, which is interesting. If we look at this workout, for example, for the pecs, we would have three sets for the bench press and then pretty much nothing else. Whereas if we look for the triceps, triceps we have bench press, which in my recent article, I go into how to count the triceps volume. And typically what I recommend, either you count it as half, or if you want to be precise, which is what I do for my clients, then you count bench presses as fully for the lateral and the medial head, but basically not at all for the long head. Now, in this case, for the lateral medial hat, bench press, three sets, and then dumbbell bench press. Dumbbells are worse than barbells because there's no horizontal force production. You can check my recent video on the effect of grip width on the bench press where I explain that in more detail. But basically, that's, well, let's count that as one set for the, for the triceps, or at least the, the lateral and the medial hat. And then we have another three sets of tricep extensions unspecified tricep extensions. What are the overhead? Are they lying? What are these tricep extensions? Uh, we don't know. So yeah, for the triceps, it's a lot more. And this is again, a typical like bro problem where people overtrain or men overtrain their arms. And maybe also that's why, because I specified male, that it looks at programs written for males or by males, I don't know. And they make the same mistake as men commonly make in that they overtrain the mirror muscles and in particular their arms. Uh, at the expense of the legs. Okay, so let's look at a lower body day. Uh, squat, deadlift. Squats and deadlift on the same day. Ouch. I, I don't recommend that typically because, you know, by the time you get to your sixth set of deadlifts of eight to 12 reps, which uh, I don't like deadlifts at all in our hypertrophy program because of the short range of motion, the anecdotally relatively high injury risk, and just the strain they put on the connective tissues. In my last video, I, I talk about that in more detail, whether deadlifts are indeed more fatiguing than other exercises. Most research finds that neuromuscularly they are not. In my program review of the five by five method, by the way, is that. And yeah, okay, leg press. So squat, deadlift, leg press. A painful, painful leg day. And then lunges, calf raises. Okay, so again, the typical bro problems, very interesting. ChatGPT basically, again, completely neglects the short head of the biceps morus. It's very sad, it's very underrepresented right now. Uh, we should protest for the short head of the biceps femoris, I think. Anyway, yeah, it's very quad dominant because you have squats, you have leg press, you have lunges, and then the hamstrings get completely neglected. Again, the classic bro problem where legs to most people mostly means quads and then a bit of glutes uh, or mostly the glute volume that they get from the presses from the quad work. And then the hamstring gets completely neglected. And that's the case here as well. So yeah, and then another, okay, upper body, lower body day. Okay, I guess it's kind of all uh, similar things. Yeah, again, it does the, the structure of like vertical, vertical, uh, horizontal, horizontal, or, or diagonal in this case. And then again, arm work, arm work, because, you know, arms, bro. And then lower body, again, deadlift, leg press, lunge, Romanian deadlift. Now it's like, okay, we had some variation. So we had two deadlifts in the same workout. Definitely not recommended. And then calf raises. Okay, there is some love for the calves after all, but this is exactly how most bros do it. It's like at the end of the entire program, three sets of calf raises. That is not how you train calves. Uh, I have an article on optimal calf training if you're interested in that, but here for the clearly, you know, for the purpose of reviewing the training program, three sets of calf at the very end of the program is not gonna get you monstrous calves. Okay, so overall, can ChatGPT design effective training programs? No, it cannot. And it's probably gonna be quite a while before it can because it's still struggling with basic logic, like what is four times per week as a training frequency. 
and it's still stuck currently, uh, seemingly in about 2010, in terms of uh, exercise science knowledge. So yeah, I would say it's gonna be a long time. I've heard very promising things about the next version of ChatGPT, but as it stands, I would not recommend using ChatGPT as your personal trainer. If you like this type of content, then I'd be honored if you subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you in future videos.